everyone, welcome to episode 66 of the Yonder Woman podcast. My name is Melinda, you can find me as Yonder Woman on Instagram and Ravelry. And today is December the 29th, 2017. I'm currently at work on my lunch break, it's the last work day of 2017. Um, and I thought I'd do this quick intro because I've been doing lots of filming for you over the course of December. And so I'm going to put it all together, similar to how I did my previous episode, uh, which is a little bit more of a vlog style. So lots of little snippets from my December leading up to Christmas, some footage from Christmas Day, and there's quite a few bits of Yonder Mum, so I'm sure you'll be very happy about that. So I hope you enjoy. As I said, it's lots of little snippets, so all over the place in some regards, but lots of fun. And I will definitely, definitely be back with a more regular episode very early in 2018. So for now, enjoy. So here are some socks that I have just made. Well, when I say just made, have made recently um, for my sister-in-law, Yanda Sil, S-I-L. Um, these are made with these yarns. So the main body is the Knit Picks for Leachy, and that's in the Sunset colorway. But these balls that you can see here, I actually had to uh, rip out some of the stripes uh, to make the colors stay in place. And when I say stay in place, I mean stay in order. So I started um, this one, or whichever one it was, but started with the orange into the yellow because my sister-in-law really likes yellow so I wanted that to be prominent because they're ankle socks so I wanted those to be visible um, and then I've used um, this red yarn which is not a brand I've heard of before it's Countrywide Yarns Happy Feet I got this at um, the Australian Quilt Show Quilt and Craft Show I think it was called um, there wasn't a lot of yarn there but there was one seller and I got that one as 7525 wool nylon and I thought that the red went really nice as a contrast. It is a thinner yarn than the Felici. The Felici is quite thick um, and I probably should have gone down a needle size or held the yarn double for the heel but hopefully it'll still be okay. It's definitely a much um, more rustic coarse yarn than the Felici which is really soft so hopefully that will keep it in good stead or hold it in good stead rather. Um, so yes, so I started on the orange and then uh, kept going down to the foot. So to start the second one, I cut out some yarn um, as well. So I believe I cut out some yarn at the beginning of the first one to get to the orange. Then I pulled out some more so as to start with the orange on the second one. And then I ran out of yarn um, on the first ball and had to start the second one. Um, so I pulled out some more yarn as well. So these ones here are all the red colors, maybe a little bit of purple in one of them. So that's really good. I think because I really like red, did you know, um, I'm going to use some so that I can make some ankle socks and maybe just have the red stripes at the top before starting a heel in a different yarn altogether. So I think that's going to be a really nice way to use up, um, those scraps there. Um, that's the label of the ball that's finished, so Felici and Sunset. Um, and I really love how these turned out. I think it's a really lovely colourway. Um, as I said, my sister-in-law loves yellows and oranges, so I think she's going to really, really enjoy these. Um, she does say she enjoys my socks. I've knit her several before, so I think that's going to be good. Uh, and this is the project bag I used. Isn't it beautiful? I was very spoiled and this was sewn just for me by my dear friend Isabel, who you will know as Fluffy Fibres of the podcast of the same name. Um, and she does absolutely beautiful work in that beautiful French fabric. I'm very spoiled. And it was lovely to have that beautiful bag to hold this project for my lovely sister-in-law. Um, and I'll be giving those to her very soon. It was her birthday the other day and I hope she will enjoy them. So here we have seven hats that I have knit from the pattern Rubies in My Pocket by Sally Jane Cameron, who is Pink Hair Girl Knits. And these are all going to a charity in Canada. 
Um, in my previous episode, I believe I had um, one, two, three, and I had said that they were going to a charity in South Africa um, for a children's burns unit. I will be making more hats for that charity, but the reason I'm sending them to the women's shelter in Canada is because Marsha, who is very little of the Very Little podcast and Marsha Ibuki designer, she works at a women's shelter in Canada and she said that the temperatures have massively dropped and it's women and children dealing with homelessness and um, fleeing domestic violence. So, you know, while there's not a priority of charity in terms of what they're doing, it's a priority in terms of the time of year. So um, I'm sure, unfortunately, there are still burns happening to the children in South Africa and around the world um, at any time of year. But of course, in winter is where the, there's the most need. So there's another five to six months um, for that. And I say there's the most need because the children who are getting burnt are mostly those who um, live in um, areas where there's not power. So they're using open fire as their heat source. So in winter, obviously there's more fires um, and therefore more accidents. So being South Africa, there's another five to six months before that peak time comes, whereas sadly there's um, a need um, in Canada at the moment because of the winter. Now, I say sadly now, it's sad that either of these charities need to exist, but because they do, I am happy to help. So I'll give you a quick rundown of the yarns. This one, and actually no, this is the only one in this colorway. This is the sugared cookie colorway of the Nickpix Chroma Bulky Twist. And then these two are Nickpix Chroma in the Dear Diary colorway. So you can see this one started at pink, went up, there's little bits of pink through there because the Chroma Twist, the colors transition. Little bit of pink right at the top when I cast off. And then that's where this hat started. I just kept knitting, so that's where the bulk of the pink went. So I really like how that one especially turned up where it's all at the bottom, and then it goes up to the gray again. And I like that this one had the top and bottom, worked out really well. This one and this little one are in, again, the Chroma Twist in the colorway drawing room. And that was lovely blues, purples, and sort of even transition through a little bit of a rainbow almost here. You can see there's some yellow and green. So that's lovely. Now these two over here, I did some in some neutrals because obviously not everyone um, likes the brighter colors. We've all got different tastes. So this one is in Knit Picks Bigo yarn and that's in the Dove Heather colorway. So it looks white, it's almost a white gray, um, but it is a little bit more gray than it's showing up here. There's a lot of light coming in. This one as well is Knit Picks. Actually, they're all Knit Picks. Um, this is in the Swish Worsted, and I've held two yarns together. So from the cast on right up till this point, I held together a gray and a brown. So you can see that in some parts, the brown shows, some parts the gray shows, some parts both are showing together. And then the brown ran out because I had less of that. So from this point, I just held um, the gray double. So I just went from the both ends of the of the ball or the skein. And the colors were both a heather. I think it was squirrel color, squirrel heather color for the brown. And the gray, I don't remember off the top of my head, something heather. It was like a gray heather maybe slate heather, something like that, but it'll, all of these will be on my uh, Ravelry project pages. And as I said, they're all using the rubies in my pocket pattern, but you'll see on the two um, baby sized ones, um, I didn't do the pattern, I just followed the instructions. Um, but because I made these when I was near the end of each ball for the respective colorways, I just wanted to use as much yarn as possible in hat not using any on the pattern but it's a fantastic pattern um, really simple um, after making the first one I didn't need to refer to it anymore really really simple but so effective um, and as I said it's a real shame that 
any charity has a requirement. It's a shame that we have to have charities, but obviously it's absolutely fantastic that we do because, um, you know, helping our community is what life's all about. So I'm very pleased to be able to contribute these. Um, domestic violence and women's and children's issues is a, um, an issue and charity is close to my heart um, because of um, early experiences in my childhood. So I'm really, really pleased that I'm able to help with this. And I'm off to the post office now to get them over there as quickly as possible. So these are some socks for my stepson Dorian, the younger son. He um, lives out of home, so he uh, does not appear on my Instagram very often. <laughs> He's also not too excited about being in photos. But tomorrow we are having his birthday party for his 21st birthday, which is incredible and weird. <laughs> but these are for his birthday. They are using um, a, the black heels, toes and ribbing are Berger de France in just the black colourway. Um, the lovely patterned yarn was what I had left over from my West Yorkshire spinners in the, um, it's a bird, something like red lark or something. But yeah, all the details will be on my Ravelry page as always. And I had knit some full size socks um, in that yarn um, and I was actually wearing them wearing those socks when I cast these on. So that was quite fun. So I just divided up what I had left um, into just two halves. And by adding the black, I was able to extend it. So the toe that I've done is the standard toe I always do, which is the one from the pattern Skedaddle by Lena Gerald, who is Fruk the Bardagak. Let's hope I got that pronunciation right, Lena. <laughs> she has the A Wee Bit Nitty podcast. Um, and that toe is really only that little end bit. So I did, I can't remember exactly the notes on my project page again, probably about 20 rows plain stock in it to just make the length full um, before starting the toe. But I think that amount of black looks really nice because it sort of balances the amount that's in the heel, which is the fish lips kiss heel. And I just did maybe 10 or 15 rows of ribbing a little bit there on the ankle. So they'll definitely be just ankle socks, um, which is good because that's mostly what he wears. Um, and I really hope he likes them. It's Tokmas morning. So Tokmas, T-O-K, is Tiny Owl Knits, which is um, a group on Ravelry named after the um, designer of the same name, Stephanie Dosen, I believe is how you pronounce her name. She goes by Tiny Owl Knits and they've got a very active group and every year for the end of year celebrations they have Tokmas and you get paired up with someone and then the either depending on where you are in the world either the 16th or the 17th of December is Tokmas morning and you get to open your presents. So this is mine. So let's see what's in there. Wowee, I have been completely spoiled by my spoiler from Tokmas. So we have some beautiful 50% merino, 50% silk fingering weight yarn. It's beautiful and so soft. And of course, red, gorgeous. This candied lemons, oh, yum, yum, yum. These are some beautiful tea bags with winter wake up tea and it's got such a cinnamony, what I imagine like a wintry Christmas would smell like. So that's gonna be awesome because we have a very summery Christmas. So that's gonna be lovely for atmosphere. Here, look at these. Wonder Woman stitch markers. So we've got the Wonder Woman symbol, her crown, her sword, and her shield, or just the you know the symbol on her shield, so awesome. And then, as if you know that wasn't enough awesomeness, look, I got a shawl knitted for me. Isn't that amazing? This beautiful sort of middle green, green middle grey, <laughs> and it's just beautiful. And it was knit just for me. I am very, very spoiled. So now I am going to go on to 
the Tokmas thread on the Tiny Owl Knits forum on Rubbery and um, celebrate Tokmas morning with everyone and thank my spoiler and have a lovely morning. It's actually really quite chilly and rainy today, which is very unusual considering it's summer and we've had days of 36 and 38 Celsius, which I think is like 98 Fahrenheit, I think. So today it's only 21 Celsius. I'm going to say that's in the 50s or 60s Fahrenheit. So this is going to be just perfect and I'm going to pop it on while I have my coffee. Joy yonder, Mum. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> and have you been dipping your lollipop into your coffee? Just like this. This is how you do it. Yonder, Mum's invented a new treat. Mm. Okay, I'm about to make some coffee bean scrub um, for a friend. So as part of um, trying to get more into slow living, being more deliberate, being more intentional. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a relaxed Christmas. So today when I'm filming, it's the 21st of December, so only a few more days to go till Christmas. And I am fortunate enough to have a job where I can take some time off. And I've deliberately planned my schedule to have this time to do some making. So it's a different type of making and usually I'm focused on the knitting and I have been doing some of that today. Um, but right now I'm going to make this body scrub and it's got just these four ingredients here Now being a coffee bean scrub the main ingredient is coffee So these are spent grounds. So the grounds I've already used to make coffee um, And as you can see I've got quite a bit. It's quite a big container um, and I'm not sure if it'll show up very well, but there's different slightly different colours in here because um, I've had a few different varieties of coffee. I like to get um, always fair trade um, coffee and single origin and so depending on the roast sometimes it comes out darker or lighter. So it doesn't make any difference at all in terms of the scrub um, itself except maybe you know a very subtle difference in scent um, but I think that's going to be lovely. So I've just been collecting these over the past few weeks um, actually several weeks there's quite I don't drink that much coffee I do drink a lot of coffee but yeah it's probably about mm, four or five weeks worth in there um, and it's been really lovely having um, when I'm having my coffee obviously I enjoy the taste and I try to be really mindful as I'm consuming it not just you know gulp it down for the caffeine but to really focus on it um, focus on the process of making it I either use my espresso machine or um, lately I've been doing some pour overs like a filter coffee. So yeah, I try to be really mindful while I drink it and enjoy the flavor. But while I've been collecting the grinds, it's been really lovely as well to have that additional thought of the fact that these grinds are going to be going to my friends and family members when I make something further for them. Ingredients that will be going in, we've got some pink Himalayan salt there, some coconut oil and some vanilla bean extract. So I think this is going to be gorgeous. Um, it'll be very simple as well. Um, we just need to, I believe, had to check the recipe again, but I believe we just melt the coconut oil and mix it all together essentially and then put it in some jars. Um, I try to buy as little plastic as possible um, so then I can reuse all the jars. So this jar is glass, but that's not really gonna be um, suitable for the sort of thing I'd put coffee grinds in when that's empty but something like this is really good for storing or um, for giving away with things in it obviously not at the moment it's still quite full but going forward it might be so the recipe I'm using is from Alex Stewart who has lowtoxlife.com if you sign up to um, receive her newsletters which are always really really informative um, via email um, they're possibly weekly. I couldn't even tell you how frequent they are. They're, so it's you're not going to get spammed. But when you sign up, you receive a little booklet, an ebook, with lots of recipes for low tox and natural and handmade gifts. And this coffee body scrub is one of them. 
Um, I'm not affiliated with Alex. She's awesome and I really love her and I love what she does. Um, so I'm mentioning it only to tell you where I got the recipe and um, to really encourage you because I think you get a lot of value um, from her newsletters and her podcast, Low Tox Life, and um, all the things she does. So now let's melt some oil and get mixing. So we've got the coffee, the salt and the vanilla bean extract all together while I'm waiting for the coconut oil to melt. And my goodness, does this smell good. The coffee and the vanilla smell is just amazing. And I don't even like flavored coffee to drink um, at all. Like I like my coffee as coffee, um, but so I, you know, while that's why I'm so surprised because a vanilla coffee to me usually wouldn't be enticing, but this smell is amazing because it's just, I suppose the, the pure essence of both of the flavors just being there. Um, so yes. Soon we'll be mixing in the oil. Once it's melted, I'll let it cool just a little bit and then we'll get mixing. So here we go, we're in the mixing stage. You can see at the moment there's still oil at the top here, but I'll keep mixing. I've added a little bit of extra coffee just to get more of that um, exfoliation happening when it's being used. And oh, the smell is amazing now that we've added the coconut oil in. Oh, I'm so happy with this and it's so simple. Um, and just a really lovely way of creating something. And here we have it. Sorry, the lighting is washing everything out. It is a very sunny day here today, which is lovely, but not so great for the filming. But <laughs> this is a very full jar. This is the one that's going to a friend this evening. These two I've made just sort of half portions, um, and I'll be uh, either putting them in smaller jars or giving them as they are. I will work that out later, depending on who they're going to, or I might even use some myself, who knows. But this one here is definitely a gift, so I filled it all the way up to the top. Um, and I'm gonna decorate it with some yarn, and I can't wait for the person to receive it. You can see here that it looks like the coconut oil has sort of separated a bit, because this, I suppose the coffee granules and the salt is heavier than the oil. But uh, as I said earlier, once the oil hardens a little bit, depending on what temperature um, the jars are kept in. It will all sort of mix in a bit, or even if it hardens and it's still at the top there, it can still just be mixed in prior to use. So I'm very excited about that. I'm very pleased to have been able to reuse all the coffee grinds and not just throw them away, or I put them in the, the compost heap um, here so they do get composted, but it's really nice for them to be reused for something that smells very delicious and will be very good for the skin because the caffeine in the coffee is really good for your skin, gives it a bit of a pep. And there you go. I really recommend signing up for the Low Tox Life newsletter so that you can get the recipe. Some more bad lighting, sorry about that. But this is a scarf I've just finished and it's in blocking. This is the Knit Night Shawl pattern. If you've watched my channel before, you know I really like that pattern. This one is knit in DK yarn. It's written for fingering weight, but you know, you can use anything. Um, and this is gonna be for Yarn to Mum. So I think it's been in there long enough. I'm gonna block it out. I'm just gonna block it casually. <laughs> I'm not gonna pin it. Um, I'm just gonna hang it over the drying rack and let it do its thing. So this is what I meant by casual blocking. <laughs> I'm not pinning it out or putting it on proper mats or a towel. It's just lying all the way across our big clothes horse. Is that a terminology used in other countries? That like this kind of drying rack? Let me just go back in, you know, whatever shape or form. Is that called a clothes horse in other countries? It is here. Anyway, back to the shawl or scarf. So this yarn is Madeleine Tosh in the DK and the colour is Holy Festival, H-O-L-I. And it's got just very, very vibrant and pretty colours. Very, very neon. This was originally going to be a charity project, but then I was knit and I started it months ago just as something to knit on. Um, but then I pulled it out the other day when Yanda Mum and I went out for lunch at our favourite cafe that does vegetarian whole food yumminess. 
Um, and I was knitting on it just to grab something because I didn't have anything else that was ready to go. And she said she would quite like it. And therefore, she gets it. I wanted something else for charity. To be honest, sometimes, um, you know, it depends what charity you're giving to. To give something this light, because um, it's just a natural base with the colours on top, that could actually be counterproductive and not useful for someone, um, particularly if it's someone who's experiencing homelessness and doesn't have a lot of access to washing for themselves, let alone their clothing. Um, to give them something light coloured um, could get dirty very easily and then that's, you know, very undignified for them to have to have something that looks dirty, um, you know, when they're in that situation. Obviously, if you give it to another charity, perhaps a domestic violence shelter, again, though, not everyone has access to, you know, washing supplies, even if they're in a shelter or emergency housing. Um, so I think all in all, it is better that this sort of colourway um, goes to Yonder Mum and I'll be able to wash it for her and I'll knit something else for charity um, that's equally as beautiful but in a colour that's um, more useful for the person considering it's all about helping them. Here's the other side. So the Knit Night pattern has a little Pico bind off. Look at those colours actually. The colours look much better from this side so sorry for the other version you experienced before but it's okay. I think you get the idea. <laughs> so yes, pretty, pretty, pretty. So I weave in all my ends prior to blocking and that way once the yarn relaxes together um, and expands a little bit, so does the end that's been woven in and when you snip it off, it's then at the actual edge of the fabric. Um, I used a 4.5 millimeter. For this while I was knitting, I thought it might be a little bit tight. It wasn't unwieldy. Um, but I was relaxed enough to keep going with it and I think, yeah, it's blocked out with a lot more drape because this is a super wash merino. So it's a 4.5 millimeter on DK. I probably could have even gone up to a 5 or a 5.5, but, you know, I'd started it by that point and it's turned out really nice. It's got lovely drape. It's definitely expanded um, and I think that's going to be beautiful. So I was going to keep this for next year's Mother's Day, which is not for another five months. Um, but because I finished it in time for Christmas, it's going to be for Christmas for Yonder Mum. She won't be able to wear it for a while, but that doesn't matter. She will enjoy opening a present and she'll enjoy all those beautiful colours and we can hang it up in her room until such time as the weather cools enough for a scarf to be relevant. I think the weather today is about... 38 degrees Celsius, which is just shy of 100 Fahrenheit. So yeah, definitely not scarf weather, but it was lovely to sit and knit on this scarf this morning. While I was catching up on some Vlogmas episodes, I watched Vlogmas with Mars of Hay Brownberry and Stitch Party with Elena, who is flying Muse. And that was lovely while I bound this off. And I have just a little bit of yarn left that I'll be using for wrapping on the jars of the coffee body scrub that I just made. It all ties in nicely. Okay, so this is bonbon making station. So Christmas bonbons or crackers, as they're called, is traditional for Christmas tables here in Australia. And I know in a lot of other countries, I'm not sure if they are worldwide or Western worldwide, but here we go. Now this year I am making them myself to avoid as much waste and particularly plastic because the bonbons you usually buy have little plastic toys in them that, you know, everyone goes, huh, it's a spinning top and then, you know, it ends up in either recycling or landfill. So this year I'm making my own. I've got toilet rolls, hygienically collected I will add. <laughs> this is the wrapping paper that was from the Who Gives a CRAP brand. Um, of toilet paper, which is what I always buy anyway, but they do a Christmas wrapping paper range for the very reason of using for either wrapping paper or as I'm going to do here, making bonbons and paper hats. So I've got the wrapping there. I've got yarn leftovers to tie them together. Damien has made little badges for everyone as the little toys, so something much more um, meaningful as well as not just rubbish people can keep. I'm having the Paddington one, so cute. Um, I also found these little pictures 
that were my photos taken way back in the early 2000s. Um, and I think I got them for free from Flickr, free print range. So I'm gonna put those in. Um, I've got this scrap paper here because I'm actually gonna write out the jokes um, myself. I do have some little joke cards here that were from some previous bonbons. Um, but I'm going to reuse some wrapping paper here. There's some chopstick labels, some receipts. And if I'm going to use a receipt, I'm going to try and find something that's relevant to the person who's getting it. For example, I have to whisper in case she's listening. The Yander Teen, this is the receipt when we bought her two newest pet rats. So that's going to be her joke there. So I think it's going to be a fabulous hand-making afternoon. I've got my coffee all set and my Winnie the Pooh mug and much more meaningful zero waste well i mean you know this is still gonna be waste upcycled then i suppose because there will still be waste but upcycled not creating new products to make the bonbons and using up some things that we already had scraps of yarn and i'm gonna have fun put on some christmas music So here we go, we're ready to build. We've got paper crowns. They're gonna be a bit rough, but whatever. And we've got the jokes, the badges, the pictures. We're ready to go. I haven't made the crowns to size. We're just gonna fit them to everyone on the day. So here is our Christmas tree this year. Um, it's a little shrub in the middle here. This one. And next to it are two little plants and they're actually called Christmas candles because these beautiful red flowers here. So this plant is an Australian native, a West Australian native called an Albany woolly bush, which is just so cute and wool, woolly, you know, it's awesome. And it is really soft actually, and quite woolly like. But the reason we've got this little live tree um, is for a couple of reasons. I've been wanting to get rid of our plastic tree for a couple of years, um, just because my feelings on plastic. Um, and you'll know, notice this big bookshelf here. That's not usually in this room. Um, we had to move it because of um, works that were being done in the study. We had a whole lot of water damage against the wall. Um, and this nook is where we would normally put our big Christmas tree. So for, that was the main reason, but I was happy to not have it because of the plastic. I think we might sell it next year. That's no judgment of anyone else with a fake tree. I've had a fake tree all my life. It's just where I'm at at the moment. Um, I am very happy having this little shrub. Now, this is the second one because I had another one that I set up a few weeks ago and it did get some filtered light through the window, but it obviously wasn't enough and it really needed to get out in the sun. So I actually picked up this second one just today, um, which is fine because they'll both go in the garden and then now I've got a pair. So got just some basic decorations on it. The little the paper star came with it from the, the nursery, um, the plant store, because um, I think they were selling them as Australian Christmas trees, which was very fun. So some basic decorations, including some little Hello Kitties in Christmas outfits how can you go wrong? <laughs> um, and I really, really love it. I love having the live tree, something more natural. But as I said, I don't know that it's meant to be indoors for that long, or at least not with the amount of filtered light that we get through here. So next year we'll have to see. But here's our Christmas stockings tucked into the books. It makes it easier. <laughs> Those two up the top are for the rats, our pet rats. We have five rats, but so there's one stocking for the older generation and one for the, the younger. <laughs> and conveniently, sorry for the shadow coming in there, but there were two empty shelves on this bookshelf when we rearranged it, so I'm using that for the presents. So, as well as being under the tree, we've got presents all organised on the shelves. 
They're all wrapped in paper from the Who Gives Us CRAP um, toilet paper company. I just showed you that when I was making the bonbons. And it just makes awesome wrapping paper. I'm so glad they did a Christmas range again this year. They did last year, so hopefully they'll continue doing it because, and it's different every year, but um, it just makes it really fun because it's toilet paper I would buy anyway because that's who I buy my toilet paper from because they um, use all recycled and sustainable papers and also 50% of their profits go to um, building toilets in the third world. But, oh, something just moved on the tree. I think it's just, if you have a look here, it's not very stable, so I think maybe that decoration just was propped up before. That's okay. But yes, yeah, so the wrapping paper from Who Gives a C, R-A-P, is uh, awesome. So we've got the red and green, which this year's Christmas, but I had much more to wrap. So those ones down there are just from their usual range, but also look very nicely festive. So yes, that's our Christmas tree and our Christmas present pile. And that little box there is a present for me. It's something the under team made. So we shall see what's in there. And you'll see down there, oh, sorry for the shadow, but this project bag just here, that's all ready for my Christmas Eve cast on. So I'm going to be knitting the sock pattern, Twas the Night Before Christmas by Danny George otherwise known as Danny from Little Bobbin's podcast, who of course started the whole Christmas Eve cast on tradition. She used to have it herself in her own, just for herself. And then when she started, I believe it was when she started podcasting, as opposed to you know being on Instagram, but I believe it was for podcasting, she encouraged everyone to join her and cast on on Christmas Eve. And this year she's just released her first sock pattern, which you don't have to do for your Christmas Eve cast on, but I think it's awesome. So I will be doing it and I'm going to make the socks for Yarn to Mum. So I've got to divide my yarn to make my two socks, um, just to make sure I've got enough. And right now I might have a little sit down, listen to the Tori Amos Christmas album and do some other knitting. So it's Christmas Eve and I'm getting the food ready. I'm cooking some tofu um, and this will be for my vegan Caesar salad. It's a flavoured tofu. And in the oven, we'll just move on down here. I've got some chickpeas roasting. <laughs> Cut in there. <laughs> and the chickpeas roasting are going to be in place of bread croutons. Here's the dressing that's about to go on the tofu. I've also made some vegan parmesan cheese and inverted commas. <laughs> that glove is there because I'm going to be peeling some fresh beetroot. <laughs> and all of these vegan recipes I'm getting from, I believe the website's called simplyvegan.com. I'll put a link uh, in the show notes for this episode. And a lot of my flavors quite by coincidence are going to have similar, sorry, a lot of my dishes are going to have similar flavours. So let's tip this in. Yum, yum, yum. It's going to be hard not to eat any of this and to keep it for tomorrow's lunch. So who knew the garden was hiding these parsnips? Now they're not of great size obviously, but hey, they're homegrown. They can go into our Christmas meal. I think they, uh, the plant worked a lot on its um, foliage more than its actual parsnip, but that's fine. <laughs> so I'm now making some fresh breadcrumbs. Here's some I prepared earlier, along with the crumbs that have just fallen off. <laughs> so this is using a low gluten bread. Um, here in Australia, there's a bakery called Baker's Delight, bakery chain. Um, and they do a bread called Lofo, which is low FODMAP friendly. Um, I don't follow the low FODMAP, but that means that it's low in gluten and other things. And both myself and Yander Mum are gluten intolerant. So this is going to be the base for the nut roast I'm making. So it'll be breadcrumbs and, 
and some almond meal. I'm actually making double portions so that I can be guaranteed of lots of leftovers. <laughs> so here is the vegetarian nut loaf. So we've got breadcrumbs, almond meal, artichoke hearts, sage, thyme, and parsley. Chestnuts, water chestnuts. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And we make it into this loaf. I've put coconut oil all over this aluminium foil and that will go in the fridge now and we'll bake it in the oven tomorrow just in time to eat. Yum, yum, yum. How are you going, Yander Mum? Oh, it's been a dreadful day. <laughs> it's a dreadful. I had all the family round for Christmas lunch, and, <laughs> and all I've done is eat. And <laughs> I don't know how I'll manage. <laughs> Thank you, Yander nephew. Yes. <laughs> so, what did you do this morning? Father? Did you go oh. to the beach? Yes, I did. You went swimming? I did. I haven't been swimming for ages. Very good. And it was fantastic. Great. And you've got your nice new knitted scarf on. I have. What do you think of that? It's unsuperb. I mean, <laughs> you can see I'm Unsurpassed. You've unsurpassed. had a couple of wines. It's just beautiful. I love these Is scarves. Mm. Yeah. You it you've got all your necklaces on. Yes, and this little brooch. You've got your little... So this is from the the bonbons that I made. Just move your hand. Yander Mum got a little Christmas wombat. And she bought herself these new necklaces from Little Shop of Plenty that we go to a lot. Yes. And you've had a good day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful day. Wonderful. Bye. Bye. So Yander Mum spoiled us all by doing these amazing colourings, one for each of us. So this one is... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm in here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and back to the picture. <laughs> this one is, there's gorgeous Yander Mum and it says to my beautiful daughter Melinda, love you always Mum Kathy. And huh? Yander Nephew. Another one. Here's what? the one she did for Emma, Yander niece. Here's the one for Yonder Bro, and here's the one for Damien. So yes, we saw this this temple in Kyoto, and this is the one that Yonder Mum has coloured in for Damien. <laughs> and here's the beautiful picture that Yonder Mum did for Rina, Yonder Sil, sister-in-law. Beautiful <laughs> bonsai tree. And here's Liam again. <laughs> There's Emma sitting very nicely over there. So here is Yanda Lexi. Yo. Yes. And she is very excited to be on the podcast. And I, I've always wanted to be a famous YouTuber. I do have a channel. Mm. Um, it's called Lexi the Inner, so check that out. There we go. So Yanda Lexi is very excited, as, as she just said, to be on the podcast. And you have just seen some footage of her swimming in the pool because, with of course, brother. with, with your Yanda brother. Phoenix. Yanda Phoenix, yes. Who are Yanda nephew and Yanda niece number two, but we're going with Yanda Lexi and Yanda Phoenix because that's cooler. Yeah. 
So, as you would have seen them swimming just now, because of course in Australia it's summer for Christmas yeah. and swimming is quite Wait, popular. Wait, did you see the desserts? Yes, I'm going to show you the photos of the desserts now. We had trifle and They're a pavlova. Yummy. So I, good. I, wait, did I, mm. I... So thank you very much for being with us, Yanda Lexi. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. Yanda woman, Yanda woman, Yanda. It's Yanda Phoenix. What are you playing, Yanda Phoenix? You just I'm call playing him, video game. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. I will be back with you again early in 2018 um, with a little bit of a wrap up of what I have achieved this year in 2017. And also maybe what I'm planning, I'm not sure. At the moment I don't have any plans and I'm not sure how I feel about setting them. Um, but I'll tell you more about that in the next episode. So until then, have a wonderful day. I hope you're having a great time, whatever it is you're doing after you finish watching this. I'll see you next time and happy crafting. Bye bye.